Pottacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 855, Escalating Season, recorded live on March 16th, 2023. Hello everyone, welcome to Podtackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Duststorm. I'm your other co-host, Godzilla T. And we're gonna have a short one tonight because the things I planned to do to prepare for tonight didn't I didn't end up doing because other things got in the way and happened, and this week's been just a little all over the place. So we'll uh, keep this one short. But we've got a little bit of some new stuff to talk about. We've got an update to the feature playlist for Halo Infinite, so everyone's been playing some Oasis BTB. Hopefully, mm-hmm. we've got some stuff to talk about there. We've got a couple little updates for playlist changes. The Forge Hub Dual Tacular, Dual Taz, Dual Tacular, Dual Tacular, I think. Yeah, Dual Tacular is posted, and they have the top ten finalists that are being voted on here in the next short bit. So we'll go over some of those maps, and then for those that are here in the Twitch chat if we have enough of you guys we might just hop into some customs because we don't usually hit customs on friday nights and it might be good to go do that but first of all we've got our little pot tackler corner so gt how did fragment friday go last week we shot stuff no we actually had a lot of fun uh we started off in the featured playlist which are the new maps for 4v4 thoughts initial thoughts mostly good no, you hadn't. You didn't have a chance to play Cliffhanger yet. No, I haven't played. Haven't played Cliffhanger yet. But the two maps that we did play, I enjoyed. I mean, they didn't seem super imbalanced for the game types that we played. I I kind of see what Dust was saying about strongholds, but yeah, it's it's not super bad. I mean, it could use some tweaks. That B Hill it's really hard to it's kind of hard it's hard to defend yeah just because of the really because of the angles of attack on it you know you're kind of down in a hole so if you're protecting b then you're already at a disadvantage and of course sniper spawns right there so yeah i mean that that seems to be a good place for sniper to spawn because you can't just pick it up and start killing people you have to move where, you know, in a lot of places, you know, you, the s- sniper spawns in a, a perfect sniping spot. So, but all in all, I had a lot of fun with them. Uh, we had some pretty close games. Uh, we played the, uh, well, we played a couple of games of, well, what's the new game mode? Gun game or whatever they call it. Escalation Slayer. Escalation Slayer. It's not too bad on a team setting. I think I think I kind of like the ending with an oddball. It kind of acts as a catch-up mechanic. So, you know, one team can't just, can't easily just blow out the other team. Yeah. You know, because the the team that's behind is still has ranged weapons where the team on the last tier, all, you know, they got the oddball. And it's up close and personal. Yeah, the, the balance is surprisingly good and we talked about it when they released the game mode details and that cycle of close range mid range long range close range mid range long range mid range and it helps like one team will definitely shoot off like i don't think i've been in the game where one team hasn't shot off at least three or four rounds ahead but as you get towards the end the other team catches up because like you said you have that unbalance of ranged weapons versus close range and most of our games got to that last round where both team were oddballs. There was a few that was close, not fully there yet, but it's it's very chaotic, but in a good way. It gives you a lot of different ways to play the game in one go, and it keeps things interesting. And not in a frustrating way, but in a, oh, we know what weapon's coming up next. We know we can 
start toppling this in our direction with the next weapon. So and I think I it like gives it. a good it gives a good variety of weapons. So everybody, you know, not everybody's good with every weapon. Mm-hmm. So everybody gets to play with a weapon that they're actually better at, maybe not good at or better at somewhere in the game's life. So there's there's a high point in there for most people. So that that version of Escalation Slayer, I like it a lot more than the other attempt. Mm-hmm. You know, I also like that it's. You talking about last part in standing? I huh, yeah, last part in standing. I don't like. I don't know how it plays in a free for all because I haven't played it that way yet. But it plays pretty good in a team setting. I like it. Well, we could try it tonight, depending on how many people we have. It's something that, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's nice to have a fresh game mode that has a pretty wide appeal, you know, where last Spartan standing, I'm, I'm sure 70, 80% of the people that played play infinite at that time didn't even touch it because it's, it, it is for the elite. It's a very specific audience. Which yeah. is which is fine. I mean, it's I'm not saying in of itself. It's a very it's a bad good game thing, mode. but to have it tied to a game pass, that was the bad part. For well, me, I just tied didn't to the participate challenges. in it. Huh? Or the, well, you yeah, mean the you event had to pass? Challenges to get through the pass. The event, the event pass. Yeah, which they've changed. So at least we don't have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> well, not always. This one there, this current event, there are event specific challenges that you have to do in the event playlist. Yeah. You have, you have to play in the featured playlist. Well, no, you had to actually play. Well, the featured playlist was the event playlist. So, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, there were challenges that you, and there's even ones this week where it's play in the featured yeah. thing, which I mean is, is fine. But the good thing is, is they're not, it's not all of them. There are, you know, all your, all your challenges apply to both passes, the event pass and your season pass or your, Mm -hmm. yeah, your season pass, battle pass and the event pass. Yep. So that's good. And I like that part because then you're not stuck in one playlist trying to get challenges done. It just sucks that energy swords and, and gravity hammers do not count as banished weapons for the challenges. Yeah, but, but a stalker rifle does, so. Yeah, who can use a stalker rifle other than Bobby? <laughs> and keys. No, that that's the shock rifle. No, I'm talking Bobby stalker likes. rifle too. But yeah, shock rifle I, is. I can do okay with a stock. Yeah, stalker no, rifle. No, stalker rifle I'm okay with. It's just the aiming mechanic I have problem with. Which is the same problem I have with every Halo game, so. Still rough. Yeah. Point gun at player. Pull trigger. Sounds you wouldn't think it's that hard, but right. it's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. You don't have the actual aiming mechanic. It's your thumb. You don't have as much precision here as you do with this. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the funny thing is, I was just watching a video earlier today. Turtle Beach has launched a flight stick okay that can be used with xbox or pc oh okay and it's fully customizable so i was thinking about flight stick is this this going to be the guitar like playing halo with the guitar hero controller type thing but this is going to be the airplane joysticks well what's so different about that in the left thumb stick well i i think you would actually be it'd be easier to play with a a flight control stick than a Guitar Hero controller. Well, yeah, the Guitar Hero be, controller. But... You can only turn one direction. But there's people out there that do it. No, Those but I, I was. Crazy. I, I, I've, I've often wanted to try that, but I've never been able to find a flight stick that is either ambidextrous or left-handed. And I have found left-handed joysticks, but they're like four hundred dollars. And I'm not spending four hundred dollars for an experiment, so I may go on the search for that again. Okay, the Turtle Beach one's like one hundred and eighty bucks, but eh, still, eh, maybe I'll keep an eye out. 
for someone that didn't like it, throws it up on eBay or something. I mean, how hard really is it to make something that's right-handed left-handed? Not that hard. Well, when you're talking flight sticks, yeah, because they're kind of molded to for your hand to grip. But you just change the mold. You just inverse the it mold. Is, but you just mirror the mold. Most people are right-handed. I mean, I sorry, get that, lefties. but doesn't mean there aren't people in the world that are left-handed, aren't left-handed. Like I said, I'm sorry, lefties. Most people are right-handed. Just saying. Anyways, our minds are always in the gutter. Oh, <laughs> TMI. Um, <laughs> we got a couple of community things. Uh, first one is a clip from Pins who posted a video of him sticking the heretic leader on his legendary run through of Halo Two Anniversary. And I guess the stick was all that was needed in order to finally take him out in this clip. So you finally got through that mission. There you go, Pins. Yeah. Pretty funny way I to end that, too. The first time I, went on to the, I remember the first time that I did that mission on Legendary. And it still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Not as bad as Cario Station. I don't remember the first time I actually beat I do. Halo on Legendary. I, I was so happy. Until I saw the ending cutscene and it wasn't any different. <laughs> oh, and to add to the video, Penn said this was a stick after an hour of him trying to defeat the heretic leader. No. Yeah. I don't think it took me that long. Maybe five minutes. It took me it it took me I think I I went for like three hours, got fed up, and then picked it up the next day. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. But once I figured out where he goes when he disappears, then it got a lot easier. Yep. Learned those tricks. I think I actually heard about those tricks from Potacular as Fumo Jive and Spellcheck or JVB. I'm not sure what at what point they went through campaign stuff. But like hearing them like talk about strats or something. Yeah. Or looking yeah, on the back forums. then I didn't even know what a podcast was. I didn't even know they existed. It was Kind of the dawn at that point, early 2000s for podcasting. Well, I mean, you know, honestly, I didn't even have a computer. And smartphones I mean, didn't exist. No, they did not yet. And then uh, Ward is hosting a Halo game night for his uh, fellow co-workers. So getting all the stuff set up, he posted a picture that he's for a, a game night that he's hosting next week. So that, that sounds like fun. Hopefully you don't die too much. And that's all we got. As long as he doesn't have to change his name to Bait, he'll be okay. <laughs> That'll just be you. Yep. That is the one thing about not having the... I mean, I guess you could pull out a 360 and do the classic style Halo 2, but having all the profile names with all the crazy names mm -hmm. as you go down the list and you create a new one, and then there'd just be a list of about 20 different handles... Wasn't tied to an Xbox Live account, so you could just create as many as you wanted. The the best one that I've ever seen out of every single one of those profile names is Bait. killed by default. <laughs> killed by default. Yeah, and you can make names on there that you couldn't do as an Xbox Live name, so you could get creative oh, with yeah. some of the things. But yeah, we were me and my buddies, we put together a land night for one New Year's Eve. We had four we had four boxes going and you know, I was playing on a little 13 inch black and white TV. And then two of the other ones were on like 27 inch TVs. And then the last one was on a 32 inch TV and we had, well, I was on my TV by myself because it's, it's a 19 inch TV. <laughs> I mean, 19 inches. People don't understand how small that is. <laughs> At 640p. Yeah. Or no, not even that 480p. Or 360p. I think we had like two or three on each of the other Xboxes. Split screen. But one of, on one of them, they just, they didn't really set up a profile. They just wide through everything and it wound up, it just put default as the name of the profile. <laughs> so every time I'd get killed, I got killed by default. Nice. It's kind of like, Killed by the Guardians. Yep. Which is another good one, by the way. And the default ones weren't bad either. I mean, those are all the characters of Red versus Blue, or at least the earlier seasons, were all the default yeah. name characters that you would get out of Halo CE whenever you create a, a new profile. So, 
Those are killed by 001. <laughs> killed by 10010011. <laughs> Good times. Land parties will never be the same. You know, for me, like I said we we get together and do land parties in Halo CE because that was your only real option. There were some tricks you could do to do it over the net, but it was XBC. No, yeah, it was nowhere near being in the same building when Halo Two launched and they launched Xbox Live. Honestly, it was just as much fun as the LAN party. It was just different. Yeah, you know, for me. Because no, I mean, yeah, we yeah, all yeah. got our headsets on. We're all yelling at each other. You know, you piece of... Never, never mind. Keep this yep. clean. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, the whole gaming atmosphere was a whole lot different back then. You know, for me, it really wasn't. From today? No, I meant between CE and 2. Oh, no, Nowadays, I'm, ta- I'm talking like no, I don't even, CE2 I, yeah. era to today is yeah, very today, different. To, to today? Oh, yeah, it's it's yeah. all kinds of different. Because there ain't nobody I actually want to talk to. <laughs> I literally has... turn off. In Infinite, voice communication is turned off. My mic's muted or turned off in the game. In-game chat's turned off. Lobby chat's turned off. All of it's turned off. Because there are so many rude people out there i just don't want to listen to them yeah which is unfortunate because sometimes there's good people out there like i've run into lobbies yes, i don't i don't have my game audio as far as hearing people turned off and if someone gets annoying i just go into the menu and mute them but there are some there's sometimes where people are talking sometimes there'll be a couple of people and they start talking and they'll do call outs and i'll actually respond and they'll say hey good job for yeah. doing this so like there's people there's a few people out there that actually are are still holding some keep keeping a little bit of faith in humanity going yeah it just seems like every time i unmute game audio it seems like every game i've got to mute two or three people and i just i really get tired of taking my time just to mute individual people all i want to do is play the game and luckily with infinite you can communicate without actually talking to each other. You can call you out can. stuff. You can. So, you know, the marking system, I think it's a good addition to the game. I like the system. I've got to get better at using it because, you know, I'm old school. Yeah. But, yeah, it's it's a different land than it used to be. The people that play video games have changed over the decades. That's true. <clears throat> Their mentalities have changed. And I wish that- there was a way to get, like, if I had this set up for streaming or whatever, like, over to my Xbox. Because that, that's the one big roadblock for me as far as actually hopping into game. And I guess I could actually, like, just get Infinite running up on my desktop and actually playing over here. It's just I haven't bothered to do it yet. Because, I, I, like, I would like to go and actually try to do voice chat in some games. Cause there are some times where I, I run across those people. And it's like, yeah, I want to talk to them. They're, they're being good teammates. Mm-hmm. Let, let me talk back to them. But I just haven't done that. But I mean, you can always set up one of your older headsets on the Xbox and just use yeah, that while you're playing. That I'd have to be wearing this for the stream and then figure out how to route that audio in to hear the chat audio. And it, it, I just haven't really taken the time to, Try well, you it. know, it, it's pretty easy. You take an aux cable out of the back of your computer and plug it into the aux input of your Astro mix amp. PC audio taken care of. Oh, I'm talking about if I had it from coming from my Xbox. Like you said, you connect your headset to the Xbox, bring your PC audio in through the aux, aux input, input of your mix amp. But that doesn't get it to the streaming PC, though. Anyways, Come, it's, it, it's the streaming PC gets it from the HDMI cable. Not my audio. Not your audio. And the, the chat would be coming through a different sound source. Anyways, it's stuff I, I have to worry about. It's first world problem stuff. So jumping into some official stuff, we got playlist updates. So the BTB Unlimited, which is the feature playlist in Infinite, is live. Along with that is all the campaign weapons and equipment 
And boy, does that change things. Have you had a chance to jump into this yet? No, I haven't. There's this thing called a new job. I mean, it's been out for two days. I mean, come on. We're, we got to be on the bleeding yeah, edge. Of course. We're be talking my about first two podcast. days of new, my first two days at the new job. <laughs> I've been a little distracted. Okay. Oh, you know, yeah. like I come home and I actually want to eat. And like last night, ate dinner and fell asleep on the couch. That was quite a day then. Well, it's chaotic. And like I was saying last week before, uh, before the map, I feel is very good for big team. Mm-hmm. Vehicle play is pretty strong. Playing it a few more times, it seems like it's still pretty strong, even with the bigger vehicles. Playing with campaign weapons, like the upgraded weapons and upgraded equipment, is very different. I saw a few people and heard a few people be like, what the heck is going on? Because they didn't realize what the playlist actually was. But it was a lot of fun. I have to admit, on Oasis, the Wasp isn't as overpowered as it is on the other big team maps. I I think you have a lot more power weapons to help balance it. It's not as dominant, I should say, as it is on the other maps. Because on Oasis, there's not a whole lot of stuff to hide behind. You mean for the Wasp, yes. For the Wasp. But there's also, as far as I've been able to tell, and maybe it's just the game as I played, there's a lot more power weapons available to players to grab on this map than there have been on any of the other big team maps so far. So there is a little bit more balance in that respect. Well, you know, most of the times when we were playing last week, most times I was getting taken out was due to automatic weapons fire, you know, AR, BR, uh, and then sniper shots. While you're in the wasp? While I was in the wasp. So like I said, there's, you've got to be, I'm not saying it's not useful. But it's not as easy as it is on the other maps. On the other maps, I can last quite a while on, in a Wasp. Uh, you know, even yep. though I'm not that great at it, I basically, you know, basically when I'm in Wasp, I'm usually acting as a distraction and just basically laying down cover fire. I rare, I don't get as many kills with a Wasp as a lot of people do. You know, Bobby. <laughs> Comp foul. Go on a rampage. Splatter me. Not bitter. Not at all. <laughs> but there's a lot of there's a lot of different things that contribute to the longevity of wasp longevity of a wasp on the older maps that don't exist on this new one. So it takes you know, it takes a little bit different play style. You've got to be it a does. lot more defensive than you do. Or it's a lot harder to be de- defensive on Oasis than it is on the other maps. But it still hasn't really affected, I think, overall balance of gunplay and no. vehicle play. So it's a good it it's a, it's actually a pretty well balanced map. I like mm-hmm. it. Yep. I love the aesthetics of it too. The inf- inference that it has from a lore perspective is also very applicable and very well done. We also have a patch that came out yesterday. This had quite a few fixes. Uh, a lot of things that got caught out by the community when the update dropped last week. And 343 worked really quickly to fix some of these things. Fixes in game crashing. Fixes in kind of gameplay timing objects as far as uh, oddball and the flag. Things like flag juggling should be fixed. Uh, the game mode details are now visible in custom game <clears throat> or custom browser menu when viewing details. Yay. That was a big problem. I was like, oh, I don't know what we're playing. Only the, the lead knows what we're playing. <laughs> it doesn't even show the lead, whether or not it's the right game mode. Target frame rates of the higher than 90 are fixed. Theater film fixes. WRS keys. Navigating the rebel section in the assets menu forge object browser no longer crashes the game. So lots of That's little important. quality of life updates. Halo's doing another partnership with Wolverine Boots. There are four boots available. None in my size, of course. Of course not. You have a problem with t-shirts? I have a problem with shoes. <laughs> Come on, I'm Halo. Just, There's big I'm folks. I'm a large, large fella. You're dealing with Spartans here. We got big folks. Come on. Oh, Come on, James. 
Come on, John. My new shirt for my new job. <laughs> right. Same size as the shirt I'm wearing, except about eight inches shorter. I, I literally almost can't tuck them in my pants. <laughs> I mean, I can tuck them in my pants by like three inches. <laughs> Midriff. There's, there's just enough there for the belt to lock on to <laughs> keep it held in so I don't <gasps> do plumber's crack. <laughs> we've got... I know, off topic. Anyway. <laughs> we've got Reach Seat Anniversary back in MCC. Halo Infinite campaign is 50% off during the Steam Spring Sale. So if you haven't had a chance to get the campaign and want to play it yet, or have, haven't played it yet and want to get it, it's 50% off on Steam right now. Tell your friends. You know, I would buy it if I could get it to work on the PC. I mean, I would buy it if I didn't get it already. So, tell your friends. Gift it to your friends. Even better. And then, as I mentioned in the, I think the pre-show, I don't know if I said in the podcast yet, but the Forge, Forge Hub Dual Tacular contest is down to their top 10. They released a video of a fly-through showcase of the remaining 10 maps. Uh, some of them look really good. Some of them are questionable, which for a Forge Hub contest kind of seems like the norm. There are some that are just like, okay, this doesn't look like it should work, but I guess in playtesting it does. Which, that that's very Forge Hub contest like as we found out when we did our mm -hmm. fiesta forging contest yeah, sometimes the map doesn't look that good but it plays really well but it plays really well yeah and i'll take play over looks any day yep if if the map's fun to play i don't really care what it looks like i mean it'd be nice to have at least some it doesn't have to be like super overdone aesthetics but it has to be at least distinguishable well, yeah, in certain I know, parts. You know, so you I look at something like, okay, boxes, I know where I am. Reach. <laughs> I mean, yes. It, but one of the maps is all important. white and stone. It's like, yeah. okay. It's, aesthetics are important. I'm not, I'm not knocking those down. But as long as you get a good gameplay and the maps sections are identified, easily identifiable, then, you know, I can identify where I am without looking at the little legend in the bottom, you know, telling me where I am. Yep. And then knowing where in relation you are on the map. Yeah. Although most of the maps, I'm just kind of been watching it as we've been talking. And most of the maps I see here, they look really good. I'm not good enough to judge how they would play by sight. I actually have to play on them. Right. But. Again, after doing our little Fiesta contest, if they say they play good, then they play good. Yep. The Forge Hub judges know their stuff. I mean, we, we got to go through it full bore. So <laughs> we've, we've at least been through the ringer once to know mm -hmm. what things that they look for and how they go about judging things and determining how things play, how things flow. So it's... Then the last thing I think that's going on is there's the gamers. Is it the gamers outreach or is it GDC? No, there's what what's event this weekend? Uh, the gamers outreach. There's a, there's an event happening this weekend, and now I'm blanking on what it was because the person that is Hazel, uh, her name's Jordan, is is going there this weekend. Anyways, I forget what it is, but. There's another thing. It's a big gaming land event. It's not Halo specific, but that's going on this weekend as well. And I think that's all I had. Oh, Installation Zero Zero had an unboxing of his helmet frame for his Mjolnir armor. I haven't watched the video yet. Pins posted it in the Discord and reminded me of it. I did see it in my YouTube feed, but I forgot to watch it. So I do plan yeah. on watching that this weekend. I heard somebody complaining that he's taking on an, you know, about that he's starting another project. Why not? He's waiting on stuff for the one he's on. <laughs> More shots reached out to us via Instagram and said that they were working on a ODST build. And I thought I saw something about installation zero zero was doing an ODST build. So I'm wondering if he's part of if they're part of the same project. Could be. And if it is, then we <laughs> we'll probably have both of them on again pretty soon because I, I said that yeah, we'd love to have them on. I just need to there, there's like six or seven people that I've said, yeah, sure, we'll have you on, and I haven't 
reached out to them. So I need to do that this week or next week. Because I'll be off next week because next week is our anniversary. So there won't be any podcast next week. But I still need to get my button gear and actually get people on the show. <laughs> but yeah. ODST Armor have a few Forge folks from uh, Infinite Forges and I forget who the other person was that worked on the Damnation remake. And Magic Moonshot. A few other folks that I've at least tagged up and said, hey, why don't we get you on the show? And I just need to do it. So, people hound me in the Discord for getting guests on. Remind me. Be a nuisance, please. <laughs> Anything else to cover, GT? I think we covered all the, the newsworthy stuff. Everything that I know of. All right. Well, thank you, folks. And some for, stuff I didn't know of. Thanks for listening to us or downloading us wherever you listen to podcasts for those in the twitch chat thanks for tagging along primarily pens tonight except for a few lurkers who are in here and we will catch you all tomorrow for fragging friday and, and hop into our discord to check out the community or come on over and play with us in our game nights and we will catch you all in the next one thank you for listening to pod tackler the unofficial halo universe podcast you can find our podcast on your favorite podcasting service and listen to us live every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. Check out our website, podtackler.com, and join the community on Discord at podtackler.com slash Discord. If you want to play Halo with us, come join us for Fragon Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Become a supporter of the show by sharing the show with your friends and family. Or help keep the lights on by subscribing to us on Twitch, donating via PayPal, or becoming a patron alongside Confal, Pins Halo, and Prestige Ace. Until next time, keep on fragging trucks.